Hey, welcome to Pastor Brian's College of Biblical Knowledge. Uh, here we are. We're going to look into God's Word here in 1 John chapter 5. We're all decorated for Christmas here at the church. It's great. Uh, you know, in the Hotram family stories, uh, there is one story. Well, there's lots of stories, but there's one of these stories that my mom and I have very different sides of the story. Uh, my mom has this version of the story where when I was a boy, uh, I, uh, we were living it at uh, the parsonage there at Manor Evangelical Church, uh, just outside of Battleground. And we're in the parsonage. I, my bedroom was upstairs and to the right. And mom says that I uh, had my crayons and colored on the wall uh, in my bedroom and then fell asleep and she noticed uh, she checked in on me and she says it was a good thing I was asleep, otherwise I would have gotten in really big trouble uh, for coloring on the wall. And uh, my side of the story is, I was four years old, I don't really remember it happening, uh, but my mom says it did, so it, I, it may have happened, who knows. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, kids will drive you crazy though, won't they? Uh, kids will do things like that. They will color on the wall. They will do things, and then, and then they'll say, Mom, I love you. Dad, I love you. And then they will do exactly what you told them not to do, right? Uh, kids are basically just wandering off, doing whatever they want, and uh, th because they're children. And uh, my theory is people grow older, but they don't grow up. And this is how we relate to God too many times, where we say, God, I love you, and, uh, and then we just go off and do our own thing. We do the thing exactly what God told us not to do, right? In 1 John chapter 5, uh, it says, uh, let's see, verse 3, loving God means keeping his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments. Oh, my word. Yeah, it's not just words you say, it's also keeping his commandments. When we think of commandments of God, I mean, there's a lot of things that we should be doing. The Bible's all you know, full of these uh, things and commands and things that we should do as, as followers of God, followers of Jesus. Uh, there's the big Ten Commandments. <laughs> and too many times we look at those Ten Commandments and we say, well, that's, that's a lot of work. I tell you what. And then we try to negotiate. Tell you what, what if, what if I get like 8 out of 10 or 7 out of 10? I mean, 7, 6 out of 10 is still more than half, right? It's still, can we round up? If I get up to 6, can we round up to following all the commands? And that's not how this works. 1 John 5, 3, loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. God's commandments are not burdensome. You ever tell your kid to do something and they acted like you were torturing them? <laughs> I mean, you know, all they had to do was take, I don't know, 45 seconds out of their life and take the garbage outside. But they acted like you just asked them to do the most horrible thing in the world. God's commands are not burdensome. I spent a good chunk of today and yesterday working on figuring out health insurance for, for next year. Not fun. I don't want to do that. God's commandments are not burdensome like that. God's not asking you to do trigonometry or calculus. God is just asking you to follow his commands, which are the best way to live this life. God is our creator. God is our maker. And God knows the best way for us to live life. And so that's why he has these commands. These aren't just to make him feel good. These are for our benefit. God's commands are not burdensome, but why do we act like they're burdensome? Because the rest of the world is not following God. The rest of the world is going one way, and we're trying to follow God and go the other way. And so we act like it's just the worst thing in the world. God's commands are not burdensome. They are, they are a little bit difficult because it's the opposite of the direction the world is going, right? That brings us to verse 4. 
for every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith. Every child of God defeats this evil world and we achieve victory through our faith. Our faith not in, in just our own faith, not faith in ourselves, our faith in God, our faith that God's commands are the best way, our faith that God is the creator, God's word is true, God made us and has a great plan for us to live in this life and hope for the life to come. And, and it, is, it seems a bit overwhelming in this battle because the world is going the opposite direction and we're trying to follow God. And so there's the tension. It's not burdensome. It's just kind of difficult at times. And God's commands are different than this evil world. He says there, for every child of God defeats this evil world. And the problem is the evil in this world is not always apparent. Sometimes the evil in this world is dressed up as niceness. And if you're a good person, you'll believe this way, you'll think this, you'll laugh at this, you'll follow this. And, uh, and sometimes this world is evil, but sometimes it's just enticing you to not follow God. And then we get to verse 5. And who can win this battle? Who can win this battle against the world? That's a good question. That's a question we're asking ourselves these days. We've got this whole world that is just upside down and gone crazy and going this direction. Who can win this battle? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. This is why we celebrate Christmas over my right shoulder, we got the manger scene. There's Mary and Joseph in a manger. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. This is why we celebrate Christmas, not because it's a winter holiday. We celebrate because Jesus is the Son of God. Let me pray for you, Lord Jesus. You are the Son of God. You are the Messiah, the one the world was waiting for for hundreds of years before you showed up and the one the world needs even today. Lord God, help us to be your people to follow you, even when the world is going a different direction. Lord, help us to be your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Lord bless you, and I'll probably see you tomorrow. Uh, Donna Lynn will be with me. We'll do a midweek update with Pastor Brian and Donna Lynn. Hey, have a great day. Bye-bye.